So I'll call this uh, regular meeting of town council to order at uh, 3.02 p.m. on Monday, March the 8th, 2021. We have an agenda before us here. Is there any additions or deletions requested? Yes, Your Worship. Uh, under correspondence 7.1, mm -hmm. uh, correspondence from Mr. Jim Carroll uh, regarding recent election sign issue. Right. Okay. Anything else? Uh, if not, would someone like to move we adopt? I'll move the agenda as amended. Thank you, Councillor Bates. All in favor of the motion? Carried, thank you. First item on the agenda are the uh, minutes of the regular meeting of town council from March 8th for consideration. Would someone like to move those minutes? I so move, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. Any errors or omissions to be to noted? No? All in favor of the motion? Carried, thank you. Next are the uh, minutes of the agendas and, and priorities meeting of uh, Town Council March 15th, 2021 for consideration. Would someone like to move we adopt those as presented? I'll move we adopt them as presented. Thank you, Councilor Reberger. Errors or omissions? None. And all in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you. Okay, the first thing are on... The agenda for administration item is the CAO's report. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a few items uh, regarding the last time I reported to Council. Um, I recently completed the second part of the International Association of Public Participation uh, training. Uh, first one I attended was the planning training. The second one was the techniques training. Uh, why this is relevant is it associates uh, with Council's public participation policy. Um, so we use this uh, as we um, advance your, your um, engagements with the community um, based on a spectrum from inform to empower. If, there's, if you recall that spectrum of five different steps on engaging with, with the public. But we also use this generally for some of our larger projects and making sure we're covering the basis um, and advising you accordingly to within our request for decisions. So that's um, my role with this, is just to have a better understanding of what IAP2 represents and how we can best serve you as council and our um, and our citizens. The meetings, uh, the meeting, sorry, with the chambers, uh, executive leadership team continues. I think it's, we've had three meetings with, uh, with their executive um, appointed um, members, the chair and vice chair, along with Councilor Barkley, the appointed council rep on the chamber, and Stuart and myself. Uh, very, very good meetings we've had the last three. Um, the last meeting we had uh, included such things as, as exploring joint partnership opportunities and introduction of a local business employee benefit program. So we did fire off an email following that um, engagement to see if they wish to uh, partner on some of the some potential activities uh, moving forward and it sounds like there is some interest there um, Had a couple of business engagements some um, over the last couple of weeks just uh, regarding different things whether it's COVID or uh, Opportunities, so those discussions continue um, This one was requested by through through the business. So which is which is always a bonus when when folks are reaching out for conversation I was away from the office uh, half a day on the 17th, um, and as well as the 18th and the 19th, a little extended break. Primary administrative focus uh, for myself, besides what I reported to you already, Council, is the business and developer engagements, economic development plan, draft entity development, which is hoping to come to you in, in April. Um, of course, COVID-19 um, is always a discussion. Um, yeah, so that's really my report, Council. If there's any questions to this report or anything else, administration or operation, I'd be happy to answer your questions. Questions? That's where your worship. I have one more item, actually. Um, okay. Vanessa handed me a document. We are going to share this with you um, and to the public here once we have the draft completed. But I mentioned to you just been passing of an Innisfil uh, elected officials candidate workshop. Uh, we did it internally last uh, pre-election last time. Uh, we're looking at a little bit more structure this this go around. Um, so workshop details um, slated uh, April 22nd, and 
um, time, likely around six o'clock, looking up to probably up to two hour session. Some of the workshop details include um, council decision making processes, council meetings, protocols, agenda content, where money comes from and where it goes, roles of governance, management and service delivery, what local governments provide, communication and engagement, work-life balance and time commitments, history of local government, governance versus administration, and, and other items. So we're gonna finalize that agenda. So if, if you know of somebody that's maybe thinking or a citizen that, how, I, have a, I want a better understanding how this all works. Um, once you see this, certainly forward this on, we'll make sure we, we publicize this. Um, but it is good for those that really wanna understand what that role is. And we'll likely have a, a retiring or retired elected official along with us for that, that, that personal experience as well. So again, just a heads up to you and onto the, the community that uh, this is in, in the works. Okay. Any other uh, discussion? This Councilor through, Harrison. Thank you, Your Worship. Just through to uh, CEO Becker, will that be done via Zoom or depending Correct. on? Okay. Yeah, Good. you bet, Councilor Harrison, it'll be done through Zoom. So the, the numbers are endless. We don't have right. to restrict or Good. have all those other pieces to that, but. Uh, Good, thank you. Okay. Well, someone would like to make a motion that we accept the CAO's report. I will move your worship. Thank you, Councillor Barkley. All in favor of the motion? Carried. Next uh, item is the ECC COVID-19 report. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a few items um, from the ECC Emergency Coordination Center. Uh, I know the leadership team is working on just uh, reviewing the protocols, procedures with staff. Uh, for example, um, separation vehicles and masking and so forth. So making sure we're, we're meeting, meeting the mark and expectation. Um, also, there is some some members uh, taking on uh, mental first health first aid. I know there's uh, Karen has taken a little bit of that training, and I know there's other interest as well. So we want to make sure again we're protecting our, our the best interests of our employees. Um, we have been working with the farmer's market um, and looks like it'll be proceeding indoors likelihood, probably with engagement with AHS um, starting in later part of May. So once that is finalized by the farmer's market, that'll be out to the community. So there's some good news there. Also the um, ECC has set uh, step three of the provincial op opening plan for committees to start up back in person. So that's the, the trigger for committees to come back into, into, into the meeting in person. Um, so later on this week, uh, I was informed that information will be released by two the municipalities about the government's vaccination program. So a little bit more specifics on what that looks like, status. So with any information that we have not heard already, I'll make sure I bring that back to you next week. Um, we'll be hearing today, if not already, that's 311, um, if government is going to move into the next phase of reopening into phase three. So maybe staff can take a peek um, as your meeting just to see what that looks like. Um, to move into phase step three would allow such things as indoor gathering, gatherings with restrictions, adult team sports, opening places like churches, museums, and movie theaters. And the key threshold set by the government is 300 hospitalizations and, and of course, declining from that. So we'll see what happens uh, in the next few minutes. <laughs> okay. Any questions? All right, would you, someone like to move, we adopt the uh, report as presented. I also move. Thank you, Councillor Reberger. All in favor? Carried, thank you. Control and action, council action control. Uh, the uh, the South uh, Regional Transit Pilot Program, uh, we've basically were, well, that's finished, right? 
other than it's not over till the end of the month, but. Exactly, Your Worship. Uh, we did report to you um, in a agendas and priorities meeting recently, okay. um, and you basically stated we, you support uh, that to be, um, to end. Um, today on the agenda is that formality through council resolution to, to approve that uh, support of the, that service to not to, to occur any, any longer. Are you looking for that now? No, it's in, it's in coming month? up, Your Worship, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, any other questions of that plan? Not, would someone like to move we adopt it or accept it for information? I'll move that we <coughs> receive the council resolution action control for information. Thank you, Councillor Bates. All in favor of the motion? Carried. Election sign policy. Councillor Harrison? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And <clears throat> last week at uh, Agenda and Priorities, uh, we, we briefly went over the policy and it was left with we were going to get a legal interpretation. And I'm just looking for an update and what the next steps are going to be. Uh, I understand that there are some signs that are non-compliant uh, with the existing policy and um, our enforcement is somewhat weak. If, uh, if existent at all. So I was just wondering where, where we sit with that and uh, what, the, what the next steps are going to be uh, with that. So I, I direct that to, <laughs> I guess, uh, Director Weimark. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship, through to Councilor Harrison. Uh, so I did get back, legal did get back to me. Um, there is no legal action at all to a policy. I cannot enforce, I have no means of enforcing the policy. So um, right now, um, yes, there are signs out. Um, the only part where I could use enforcement is to take it off town property. I cannot go on private property. So there are options available to council. The decision is up to yours as to where we go further with this. Um, the sign, a sign bylaw will have some component of compliance However, not to the degree where we can walk on their property and take it off without going through court order. So um, there is options available. Uh, has to be a bylaw if you're looking for an enforcement component. We must do a, a bylaw. I either add it to the existing election bylaw or I do a completely different election sign bylaw um, would be another form to do that. Um, that's really where we stand if, if the policy if you're not wanting the policy to stay as is, I don't have compliance. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, what about the 45 days? The, that seems to be uh, a, a bit of an issue. Is, is that worth discussion? Maybe reducing, reducing that? Uh, I understand that there's been a lot of, I've had a number of complaints around why are we seeing signs 10 months before? Uh, so is, is that worth a discussion with, with council here? Or um, I guess if we can't enforce it, maybe it's a mute point. I'm just, uh, as clarification, uh, Director Weimark, that on, could we actually enforce a bylaw that says even on private property, no signage, election signage? Your Worship, you can. So the first, so what the enforcement would be, would be a fine. The very first thing would be a fine. Um, the sign by law that we have right now, the first offense is $500. And you can put a second offense in. Um, that doesn't get them to take it down, right? That's just a, an enforcement component that they'd have to pay that sign. If we wanted to follow through with that and the sign was still up, you would go with a stop order. Um, then that goes to court and you have to go to court to have 
then and only then would we maybe have the right to go and take it off their property even at that it's very it, you're looking at private property but there is there is a form there there is a, a method to do it in process yeah. right um, what the timelines of by the time you issued the stop order and how long it would get to court and yeah. come back I'm not sure what that would be but we can definitely do that on uh, town property Without Absolutely. The policy we have right now affects town policy, yep. that we, we can enforce that because it's our yep. land. Yeah. Councilor Reberger. So I think I would like to see us follow up on this. I don't know that... Um, I just think we're, our policy now isn't as strong as it could be. I think if we did it in the form of a bylaw, um, and it's unfortunate that we even have to do this because you know the expectation is if you have a policy that people would respect the policy but evidently that was done in a simpler time and um, when people respected things so i think we should go I, I would like the administration to look into what maybe some of the other such as olds in red Deer county have in place and, and i personally would like to see it perhaps state as of september 1st signs could go up and then you're not doing math and calculating when 45 days is if it's just a simple date of September 1st in the election year would be how I think we would like I would like to see it approached I think okay uh, Councillor yeah. Barkley your worship I, I agree with Councillor Reberger it's a, a shame we have to go through all this I mean this policy has been in place since 2004 and I realize the nomination period is much different this year but um, you know, policy is a policy, but um, I also think it's, um, you know, it's about fairness as well. I mean, there's people that are going to be running that haven't even announced yet. And so, you know, we, we either have to get rid of the election sign policy because it's not being followed, or we go to something different, which is a bylaw. So I would agree bylaw. I'm, I, I almost like what Olds is doing in the sense that I, I think it's noon on nomination day. That way everybody's nominations are in, their papers are in, and everybody puts their signs out at the same time. And that kind of um, at least makes that part fair. So anyway, I, I would definitely like us to, to move to, to a bylaw if this isn't going to be followed. Councillor Bates. So I, I just have a question maybe because I don't know. Uh, nomination day versus September 1st what what would that nomination day is September 21st and it it's exactly 30 days before election um, whereas September 1st would be almost your 45 days yeah. uh, I would certainly like to see us do whatever we can to not have a NASCAR looking town for the rest of the summer um, and yeah, I, I could agree with either date. Uh, yeah, that, that's all. Councillor Barkley. Your Worship, I just to bring to attention to the letter that came in from the citizen that this poll that was done, even though it was, you know, nothing scientific, but it was at 222 to 25 to 23 that want. 45 days or less, basically, as opposed to putting them out now. <laughs> so it's pretty overwhelming, and, and I know personally I, I've had lots of feedback, and um, yeah, I haven't heard anybody say to me personally that they like signs out there now, so I would like us to move forward. Well, is someone prepared to make a motion that we uh, have uh, administration come back, prepare a bylaw for our consideration? That's I'll make that motion that we direct administration to prepare a, an election signed bylaw and bring back to council it as soon as possible. Further discussion? All in favor of the motion. Carried. All right. Uh, RFD regarding code of conduct. Thanks, Your Worship. Vanessa Conner, yeah. 
Um, this is to update the current code of conduct bylaw as recommended by Sage Analytics. As they went through the recent code of conduct investigations, they identified several suggested updates to the bylaw. Six areas of recommended updates are listed in the attached letter from Sage Analytics and have been included in the new bylaw. In addition, they actually also suggested that you may desire to make a statement of disclosure bylaw that we're leaving up to council to see their desire for that one. And as well, that committee members in the future receive orientation to understand code of conduct roles that they also have and share, just like council. But administration's gonna work that into orientations going forward. So at this time, we're looking for first, second, and third reading of the new code of conduct bylaw. Well, I think uh, we've had, we definitely have uh, discussed in these issues a number of times, and, and we're here to listen, hear uh, Sage's report and recommendation on these items uh, is someone prepared to make a motion that we proceed to give this first reading your worship I'll, I'll move that we uh, proceed to first reading on bylaw 1665 2021 thank you councillor barkley your worship uh, councillor barkley said proceed to i think give third reading or first reading sorry give first reading is the wording is it thank you Okay, <clears throat> discussion. <coughs> Councillor Bates. Yes, Your Worship, I, I think when Sage first uh, came here, uh, one of the things I asked her to look at was to give us, for our money, <laughs> uh, any anything that she saw that we were deficient in. So, um, and and everything that she's reported to us is, I think, here. And as far as upgrading it and. I, I feel we should go with it. Any other discussion? Your Good. Worship, did, did you want the disclosure discussed now, or is that after we potentially pass this? Your Worship, the Councilor Bradley, I think it's quite different, the two. Yeah, I'd okay. suggest stick with code of conduct sure. bylaw first. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, no further discussion for first reading of this am amendment. I'll ask the uh, question. All in favor? Carried. Is someone prepared to make it, give this a second reading today? No. Your Worship, I'm prepared to give it a second reading. Thank you, Councillor Bates. Discussion? All in favor of the motion. Carried. Is someone prepared to make a motion that we proceed to third and final uh, reading of this amendment? I'll move that we proceed to third reading of bylaw 1665-2021. Thank you, Councillor Reberger. All in favor? Carried. And is someone prepared to do that third reading your worship i would like to move that we move to third reading or give third reading to bylaw 1665 2021 okay thank you all in favor of the motion carried unanimously I didn't report in the uh, on the agenda that Councillor uh, Hill was not present, but I guess you make note of his time. And anyways, okay, move on to Community Services uh, Regional Transit Service Pilot Program. Uh, point of order. Oh, I thought we were going to discuss the disclosure pilot. Oh, you want to do that right away? Sure. It was in that report. All right, sorry. Let's do that. 
<laughs> okay, I think it's a good idea. We should do it. <laughs> your worship, right. to CEO Becker, is this something that you have seen in your career that would be typical? I, I know when I was uh, securities licensed, there had to be full disclosure, and then some it seemed with, with my employer and... Um, I guess my, you know, we, we just have to make sure if that's where we're going that that information is protected, right? Like what, internally? Right. Because, yeah. Worship Councillor Barkley, I've not uh, had the experience to present um, or minister or help council minister the uh, a statement of disclosure bylaw. Um, nor have I heard of any municipalities that. Um, have enacted upon the rights according to the Municipal Government Act to, to have this bylaw. It may be something we could research based on your direction to do so. As uh, if you, if Council wants to advance that uh, that draft, we can certainly do that uh, research as well. We you worship through to CEO Becker. I, I don't know. I, I guess my sense is it's covered in the MGA, and you know you hope that person on council is following the, the MGA, and if they're not, then there's ramifications behind that. So I'm like, I, I'm not sure what this would change in the sense that, you know, if you have somebody that's not following things anyway, maybe they're not disclosing all, all the holdings that, that they have. And so that, that's my concern is, you know, you, you become, I don't know, so many regulations and everything that and people may, may not want to run because maybe they don't want to disclose and yet they're not somebody that's necessarily going to going to uh, not, not adhere to the policies that are in place. So, Councillor Bates. Uh, yes, Your Worship, I'm just wondering if, because this came in after, I'm wondering if we could perhaps ask administration to ask Sage if they would tell us is this in other municipalities or we're like what is the driving force here um, other than obvious that you should disclose or recuse but is, is, is there any more information we could get from Sage on this particular point? Uh, Your Worship the Councillor Bates, um, I think we could conduct that research ourselves internally. If, you know, besides, you can go right into a draft bylaw, but if you're uncertain if that's a, the flavor you'd like to, to proceed, um, which you can, you can give us that direction, or you may ask administration to conduct that research on other municipalities um, on, on how they apply that bylaw and how it administered and the impacts um, to the governance uh, to, to that of council. Can I get a bit of a clarification? Uh, would this this disclosure wouldn't take effect until after they were elected, or yes? So it's kind of seems to me it should almost be when they file their nomination papers, but I don't know. I guess after they're elected, elected uh, if something is disclosed, what happens? You, you know, the, uh, the worship, uh, the election act um, outlines how you can be elected. So this bylaw is outside of the election. It's it's that of the uh, once you're a councillor, then okay. then you then are required to disclose as per whatever the bylaw would read. So it's important that you know we provide a package, and that's why we could have a training session or any other materials to go in a nomination package that um, you will be required to do this. So it's. When they file for nomination, they just re re receive that uh, those documents that this will be asked of you if you are elected. Just 
put over to Heather, but it's also up to the person seeking to run for council to conduct that necessary research on yeah. what is required. Uh, so we provide information, as for Heather can speak to that, but certainly put the onus on the, the person seeking nomination to understand really what they're getting into. We, we don't teach people how to be a counselor up to that point. We certainly provide tools once you are a counselor. We, there are educational opportunities then, but we put the onus back on the citizen to, to conduct that research. Councilor Reber. So the, maybe this statement of closure might be more applicable in bigger centers, but I just, the part here that uh, caught my eye is where it says a bylaw to increase transparency of their personal and business interests as referenced below. So yeah. to me, that just makes the council more transparent of this. If everybody discloses this, then it's, it's out there. There are no secrets. It's, yeah. Well, it's, uh, what are your wishes? Is there a motion? Sure, I'll move that we direct administration to look into a statement of disclosure bylaw and bring some information back at an upcoming meeting. Okay. Any further discussion, Councillor Bates? Yeah, I just wanted to ask administration, I guess through to CO Becker, if you feel this would be an onerous, it wouldn't be a big job picking this up, would it? Just to, then we can all see what it looks like. It may be, Councillor Bates. I'm not well, sure. Actually, maybe I should yeah. rephrase that. Maybe if you would come back to us and tell us it's getting to be onerous, we might change our minds. But yeah. if we could further define it, I think that would help us all. Uh, Your Worship, Councillor Bates, I think uh, the research will indicate uh, what level of degree is required to administer. Um, you know, providing and holding in trust uh, that the nature of that information. So I think uh, that research will help us understand what that is. Okay, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion. Carried, thank you. Karen, are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Excuse me, isn't there, isn't, the floor there is more, yours. isn't there one more recommendation here that we... Oh, this training. <laughs> you need that covered. So, Your Worship... Um, I thought we did that anyway, sir. So what I... If I'm reading this correctly, the recommendation from Sage recommends that committee members receive education. Sorry, Vanessa, am I taking over here? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> committee members receive education and uh, orientation training to ensure that they understand the code of conduct responsibilities, council's expectations when they are serving the town of Innisfil through their respective council appointments. I I'd suggest that um, um, you're close to the election, that the orientation that is provided does cover code of conduct. Um, council did receive opportunity for that training um, throughout your term. Um, it will be made available with new new council. Um, as Vanessa stated that it's the plan for administration to incorporate code of conduct because it also applies to council's committees as well. So that, that has started already. So as H friendly, for example, that committee is established uh, the orientation will include code of conduct um, and procedure bylaw review. All right. Well, we've uh, opened a discussion. Is someone prepared to carry this further? Well, just a question. So uh, what I'm reading here is committee members who are not counselors, so on average, most of them would not get, they would not engage in getting the training uh, a prospective counselor so and then would we not also at some point go back to look at our other current committees and and pass information at least to the members of of what what they are expected to adhere to so I, I'm, I'm concentrating on council committee members who are not counselors in the 
You betcha. Uh, your worship with Councillor Bates, um, you just passed a new code of conduct bylaw, and it clearly outlines well, the old bylaw, but also in the new bylaw, references to this that holds to council committees. So we will undertake that process over the next you know, several months to making sure our committees have that awareness. So we'll do that internally. They will not the committees will not receive at this given time any formal education as you would, as the new council would, uh, but we'll make sure we do review the code of conduct bylaw with our respective, com with your respective committees from now on moving forward. So no action, a specific action is required here. Your Worship Councilor Bates, the action has been delivered really through the passing of the bylaw. Thank you. Okay, is everybody uh, satisfied with that response or explanation? Thank you. All right. Now should we give this young lady a chance to talk? It's all good. All right, so I'm back before you today basically as a follow-up from the A&P meeting a couple of weeks ago when I presented the memo to you regarding the 2A South Regional Transit pilot project. So the background information is there on the pilot project. The pilot project is um, ending on March 31st. So the anticipated outcomes for anybody who's using the um, bus service right now, certainly it's going to be a loss for those that are using it. Um, will it also put us back where we're going to have limited transportation options for our residents at the moment? Um, individuals will have to rely on friends, family, or other transportation services at this time um, to either go between Innisfil and Red Deer or elsewhere for essential services that are not available or may be limited in, in, in Innisfil. Other modes of transportation are much more costly than the rates that, are, that were provided through the 2A South Regional Transit. The service level impacts um, administration wise is um, reduced administration support that was committed to the partnership group for the duration of the project. There, I should, it should be noted that there were no dollars committed to the project and all expenditures came in under budget at this point. We have our final meeting, I think it's this week and everything is still looking like it's under budget with our final project. So the recommendation today, the recommended motion is that council formally discontinue the 2A South Regional Transit Service at the completion of the provincial pilot project end date, effect of March 31st, 2021, as the service is not economically viable to continue without provincial funding. Okay, he is... Uh Someone prepared to make a motion to that effect. That's so move, Your Worship, that we formally discontinue the two-way South Regional Transit Service at the completion of the provincial pilot project, effective March 31st, 2021, as this service is not economically viable to continue without provincial funding. Okay, discussion. Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Your Worship. Through to uh, <clears throat> through to Karen. Uh, the other communities that participated in this project, such mm -hmm. as uh, Penhold, Springbank, or Springbrook, did uh, has there been discussions there about possibly looking at a smaller regional service? And I think we sort of talked about it when you presented couple weeks ago about mm -hmm. maybe the transfers at Gasoline Alley or at Springbrook and the other communities do a do a feeder service has there been any discussion around that or um, uh, yes so when we um, made our recommendations in the report that I submitted that was one of them was the on-demand service and the other one was like another service that could potentially look different right now without additional provincial funding that was not felt that it was possible okay yeah. so I guess just a further question then has the transportation committee formally been approached about looking at options 
Yeah, we actually are hearing from a presenter tomorrow on another um, an organization out of Red Deer that provides a service as well, a volunteer driver type of program. They do all the administration. We would just support it if we were to do that through recruitment of volunteer drivers and just promoting the program. So there might be some options there as well, and they have all the um, they have all of the processes in place for for that and volunteer um, screening and things like that. So so our transportation committee is actually um, going to be participating in that tomorrow. Great. Well, yeah. that's great to hear because mm -hmm. there's a number of people that rely on that service. Mm -hmm. And I think I mentioned it in previous meetings that it, it's hard to take something away when they have it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear that you and the committee are looking at, uh, at other options to, mm -hmm. for that. So thank you, uh, Director Bradbury. <laughs> Councillor Barkley. <clears throat> Your Worship, through to Karen. Um, the federal government recently announced, I forget, $15 billion or something in infrastructure, like transportation funding. Are you, can you put that on the list for transportation committee or whomever to, to take yeah. a look at? And, and I don't know whether it, it would apply, but you know, certainly some of the verbiage in that announcement was around smaller municipalities and helping them with their transportation needs. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to, to look at that. Um, I mean, I, I know the ridership wasn't huge on, on the buses and the buses are probably way too big and yet, you know, it's still a service that, that people use, so. Yeah, and one of the unfortunate parts is initially we also applied for, I don't know if you remember when we also applied uh, together on that um, green trip funding and we were awarded, um, we got approved for it, but then that money didn't come through when there was a change in government as well. So we weren't able to look at those f future forward um, options either, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Bates. Yeah, just, just one question for information. Uh, it indicates that, you know, we had the, uh, the grant of 700,000 minus revenues co collected. Do you, do you know offhand how much revenue was collected for the whole system? Uh, I'm not sure I have that in this. No, I just, it, it's not important. I was just curious. I don't remember. And we number. did part way through we cut the fees yeah and I don't believe for last year for 2020 I don't think the province it will be collecting any revenues that was in the initial agreement but because of the changes with um, COVID and the reduction in services available I don't believe the province will be taking any revenues for 2020 yeah. I should also note too that we've been um, we will be submitting in a trans um, grant application to MARD, the Medically At-Risk Drivers Program, to see if there are some options there as well for funding. That's due actually by the end of this month. All right, any further discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you. Thanks, Karen, for making you sit. And wait. <laughs> All right, move on to an RFT regarding bylaw 1470A71 to amend the land use bylaw. Okay, so the owners of uh, 4620 50th Avenue, uh, Innisfil Associate Clinic Management, has applied to add a list of select non residential uses uh, to the R3 district specific to their property. Uh, within the land use bylaw. Uh, so the site is indicated there on the map and the uses requested to be added as discretionary uses are financial services, health services, mixed use developments, offices, personal services and retail stores. Uh, the application is intended to address the future uses available for the space in the existing building. Uh, the applicant's rationale for adding the selected non-residential uses is as followed. Uh, the property has been occupied as a medical clinic and pharmacy since 1974. The location is on a main artery, 50th Avenue, between Main Street and the hospital. The existing building does not avail itself for conversion to a multifamily structure, uh, but has substantial value as it exists. Um, so again, this bylaw would uh, apply specifically to this property. Um, 
and would include yeah financial services, health services, mixed use developments, offices, personal services, and retail. Um, again, as discretionary uses. So the LUB designation on this property uh, was changed to R3 uh, from direct control, actually, as part of the 2009 general update of the land use bylaw. Uh, the existing uses on the site have non-conforming status and had been allowed to continue. Um, while the new tenants um, involved, while new tenants involved in the same uses within the floor spaces a possibility. The current R3 designation limits options for other tenants and reuse of all or part of the building as space becomes available. Um, so the list of uses selected by the property owner includes ones that uh, are considered comparable to the medical clinic and pharmacy uses that have operated on the site for many years. Um, it also includes uses that are expected to have similar characteristics uh, as the clinic and pharmacy and are able to make use of the existing building as is. Um, and uses that can, could be considered in a major redevelopment of the site. So that's where the mixed use development could come in. Um, most of the uses proposed uh, are expected to have similar traffic generation and parking needs as the existing clinic and pharmacy. Uh, some may have different times of operations compared to the existing clinic. As discretionary uses, the days of the week and the hours of operation could be subject to limitations uh, as deemed necessary by the development authority. Um, to manage trans, um, traffic impacts, the bylaw proposes to limit um, on the financial services component to those that do not have a drive-through or on-site in-person banking. So this would leave the opportunity for things like financial planners, um, but not a full-on uh, bank at that location. Um, so in addition to the above, the R3 district does allow childcare facilities, religious assemblies, apartments, and other forms of multi-unit residential. Um, so these uses could be considered in the redevelopment of the site or the repurposing of the existing building. Um, so finally, the standards for yard setbacks, building height, and parcel coverage in the R3 district um, for added uses would be as determined by the development authority. And in the case of the complete redevelopment of the site or a significant building addition, um, the development authority would be able to apply uh, their discretion for those requirements to meet the needs of the specific the particular site. Uh, just as note, the site is surrounded um, by residential development consisting of a mix of detached dwellings, uh, duplexes, and condos um, under both the R3 and the R1C district. Um, so any changes to the land use bylaw requires uh, the holding of a public hearing and public notification to be provided. Uh, a notice will be placed in the Albertan and on the town website, and letters will be sent to all adjacent property owners. So we would be looking at this time for council to grant first reading to the bylaw um, and to set Monday, April the 26th at 3 p.m. There's just a typo in the report there for the date and time of the public hearing. Okay, uh, is someone prepared to make that motion? I will make that motion, Your Worship, to grant first reading to bylaw 1470A71. Thank you, Councillor Barclay. I have one question, um, Megan. Is the the condo structure next to it? What's the zoning of that piece? It's zoned R three as it well. Is. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any discussion, Councillor Beats? So I, I wasn't exactly following what you were reading. I thought I heard you say childcare as being one of the uses. How does this connect to the MPC that we had the other day? Um, so childcare is a current discretionary use within the R3. So they, what the application is requesting is the six additional um, uses that are on your screen there okay. to be added uh, to that site. I think I prefer most of these to the one that was already approved. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? And the motion is to, uh, did we get that motion? Councillor Barkley. <clears throat> okay. And then the, also that the uh, public hearing would be April 26th. Okay. 
All in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you. Five point three residential infill incentive program. Okay, so um, as part of ongoing discussion that um, we've had with council respecting the promotion of diverse housing opportunities throughout the community um, and some of our previous discussions um, around incentivizing such uh, development, uh, administration has developed the residential infill incentive program policy uh, for council's review. Uh, the intent being to promote the redevelopment of residential properties in mature neighborhoods. Uh, the program will provide up to $15,000 uh, to eligible projects as a non-refundable grant uh, to offset uh, the following costs. So development and safety codes permits, uh, offsite levies, the preparation of engineering studies such as grading drainage or geotechnical reports as required to complete the project, uh, hazardous materials and abatement, uh, installation and replacement of water and wastewater service connections, including uh, excavation and water meters, and the repair and replacement of sidewalk and roadway asphalt resulting from service installation. Um, so the project would be scheduled to commence April 1st, 2021, and continue through December 31st, 2022. Um, the process would generally roll out in that all of the costs outlined would be um, paid up front by the applicant, then at the time of our final inspection, once all of the permits are closed and the conditions on the development permit have been fulfilled, um, that's when we would um, reimburse those fees. Um, the fees that are not, were not paid directly to the town would require um, proof of payment or receipt um, prior to that being released. So the policy has been developed in line with other similar programs, um, examples being the City of Red Deer and Medicine Hat. Um, so at this point, the financial impact, um, we're estimating up to four projects per year. So that would be $60,000 to be funded um, from the general capital reserve. Uh, if the program becomes oversubscribed, additional funds may be requested uh, through council. Um, so at this time, we'd be looking for two motions uh, one to approve uh, the policy, and then one to approve uh, the allocation of those funds. All right, so I'm prepared to make a motion to that effect. I'd so move, Your Worship, that we approve the Residential Infill Incentive Program Policy 2021-003 as presented. All right. Discussion? Councillor Bates. Yeah, question through to Director Jenkins. So a couple of the items that are listed there, are those things that the town would normally do and then bill back? So typically, um, no. So any installation of upgraded water and wastewater connections, that's... Um, that would be on the applicant. So if you're going to rebuild, you would be involved in contracting the excavator and doing that work. And it is sometimes one of the things that people really balk at, that they're not, um, they weren't anticipating having to do that when they come forward to, to do that sort of development. So I think, um, you know, this offsetting some of that cost may be... Um, so would they help. normally repair or replace sidewalk and road as well? Yep. So would there be a component in here where we get involved and could do it cheaper because we... We have talked about that, that potentially we could include with our sidewalk program or something like that, we could identify these sites and could, could reduce that. Well, um, plus I would assume we'd have some buying power on volume. So yeah, it doesn't uh, detract from the mm -hmm. recommendation. I just wanted to know, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Councillor Reber. Uh, through to Director Jenkins, and just to be clear what an infill, like it's anything, I read the definition there, but if I had a double lot and I wanted to build on the second lot then that wasn't serviced, that would, you could apply that to those services. Or, so it would apply to any empty lot or uh, an older 
house yep. that you knock down or any of those types of scenarios then it yeah, would cover any, all those right um yeah any vac existing vacant lot demolition and reconstruction um and even the policy defines reconstruction so if it's over 75 percent sort of rebuild of a house um they could look at that as well okay, thank you okay any further discussion Well, I'll ask the question and all in favor of the motion. Carried, thank you. And you require a second motion to approve the 60,000 to be funded. Is someone prepared to make that motion? <clears throat> yeah, I would move that we approve 60,000 from the general capital reserve towards this project. Okay, thank you. Councillor Reber, any further discussion? Just a question. So is that that's for this year? Correct. Yeah, yeah just clarify the motion. Thank you. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, an RFD regarding downtown implementation. You guys were just saving up because you wanted to talk about this one, right? <laughs> um, so in follow-up to the couple of discussions we've had over the last couple weeks on the implementation of the economic development strategy and the associated uh, downtown urban design plan. Um, so based on conversation and council input, um, we've put together some a few options as council had expressed concern about the project um, and we wanted to look at some options for the more timely implementation of some of the components of the ECDEV strategy. Um, so I've come up with, with four options here um, to sort of help our discussion. The first being is to essentially proceed with the urban design plan uh, creation as outlined in the RFP submission um, with the budgeted $50,000 amount um, awarded to urban systems. The timeline uh, for the completion of that was uh, slated for uh, Q4 of 2021. Um, the other options, sort of two, three, four, could be pursued independently or all of them, I guess. Um, the first one being to engage, engage a design firm to provide visual design concepts for Main Street lighting and public space enhancements on two to three sites. Um, we have a design estimate that in the five to $10,000 uh, range that would include the preparation of basic options, design refinement, coordination, and supplier information for construction costing. Um, the estimate for this project, um, lighting, preliminary investigations that we've done into to twinkle lighting um, are in that ten to twenty thousand dollars depending on how many lights and how many trees and how far we want to to go. Um, and then potentially if we wanted to look at a couple of public plaza spaces, um, looking at new lighting, seating, um, planters, uh, decor, we'd be in the five to $10,000 range uh, per site. Um, we've sort of preliminary, preliminarily looked at um, sort of the crosswalk and cut through between uh, TNT signs and collective house now, um, possibly the, the vacant lot on Bankers Corner, um, even the any of those corners really, apart from the Scotiabank corner, we could could look at do, doing something with extra lighting and planters and umbrellas, that sort of thing. Um, so that you know, depending, we could go anywhere from probably thirty to however many dollars. Um, so we will need an indication from council as to to a budget for that um, that amount. Um, and then we would either, we can do that right away or we would be looking to come back to get budget allocation to pursue specific um, you know, construction or installations. Um, the second option, uh, or third option I guess it is, is to initiate uh, an update of the 2010 downtown ARP um, consisting of a policy review and creation of design guidelines uh, with support from PCPS within our um, annual operating budget that we have through PCPS and then working with an external design consultant 
uh, to help us through a public design charrette and graphic renderings um, that would also supplement that document. So we would be still getting the update completed. Um, the timeline would likely stretch out um, a little bit longer um, as administration would be completing some of the tasks to coordinate that project. So we would be aiming to, to complete by Q2 of 2022. Um, but we will still get the update completed, the renderings that were up, um, identified in the economic development strategy and the design guidelines that we've talked about previously. It would just be a little less streamlined and a bit more hands-on for administration. Um, so we would look at funding that through yeah, our PCPS budget and up to $20,000 for an external design consultant um, to lead components of that um, project. Uh, the final idea is to initiate a crosswalk design challenge. We've talked about um, looking at painting or designing some interesting crosswalks in our downtown. Um, so we could explore a partnership opportunity with the library or others um, to hold a design challenge, um, setting a theme or a series of themes with winners um, installing their design with support from volunteers and staff. So um, minimal budget for that. Um, we'd be completing that Q2 2021. Um, I've had initial conversations with the library and they're quite excited. Um, so that would be just an option to sort of bring the public in on um, on some of these ideas and, um, yeah, get some of the work done too. So I guess financial impacts, the urban design project did have a $50,000 allocation within the 2021 operating budget. So whether those funds, um, are re adjusted to some of these other activities, um, or how council wishes to move forward with this project. Okay, uh, someone pre prepared to make a motion to support the recommended uh, action? Your Worship, Council may wish to work outside your procedure bylaw and have discussion because there's a whole slew of yeah. different topics. You may want to just have that conversation first. Do you want to uh, go ahead with it here now? Is that your thoughts? I recommend council just have your yeah. deliberation okay. on this report and see where that takes you. All right, so why don't we open it for discussion then and see. Okay. Your Councilor <laughs> Barkley. Yeah. No, I, I really like this, uh, Director Jenkins, and particularly the uh, getting in people involved in the crosswalk design. I think that's a wonderful idea. And, and uh, I don't know if you're reaching further than the library, but maybe, you know, McMahon, First Family Resource Center, et cetera, might get involved with that as well. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm all in favor of the way you, you've um, laid this out for us. And um, I think it's great having it put into to three different areas like this. And even though I may have to wait for the twinkle lights, but. <laughs> <laughs> so be it. Thank you, Councilor Harris. Through yeah. to Director Jenkins. Uh, the crosswalk design, that could start right away. Uh, option two, that's quarter three, so we'd be ready for sort of a, a fall, winter kind of season. If we could get into summer, we we will, but yeah, we'll see how quickly we can get some ideas and get mobilized, so yeah. Okay, and I would concur with Councillor Barkley's comments around, yeah, it's a, it's a pragmatic uh, go forth, so I, I fully support uh, what you've laid out here, so it's a job well done. Any further? Your Worship. Uh, the Bates, yes. Just a question uh, on the lights. Um, are we 
just to try and understand, are we thinking that these are over and above the Christmas lights or do they work together or replace or do we know? <laughs> Welcome to my dilemma. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the impression from the ECDEV strategy and, and some of the conversation I've had with the, the one consultant is that they would be over and above what we currently have. Um, but that was sort of when we got into the actual conversation. It's like, do we do these two blocks? And then, yeah, we still have the Christmas lights or do we focus on 49th uh, East right now as opposed? So um, hopefully we can narrow some of that down in, in it, conversation. Okay. And just, yeah, just an observation. I, I, we'll, we'll get to see them in time for us where it actually starts to get dark early enough. <laughs> Because in the middle of the summer, I don't think you'll hardly see them. I'll be, it'll be past my bedtime. Thank you. Your Worship, just one more question through to Director Jenkins with uh, the downtown um, design. Would, would there be opportunity for public participation in that? And yeah, so that's what, what my hope would be, is that we could still sort of grab on to one of these design uh, consultants to do a a design charrette or a public session. Um, some of them proposed even with COVID, sort of a walkabout type of thing where they would go around and talk about various areas and what the potential would be, um, but then have sort of staff and PCPS take on a bit more of the actual policy writing uh, component. Councilor Ruder. <clears throat> so if I'm understanding this correctly, then we would basically get to where we would have got with option one, just doing it in a different, in a roundabout way, right? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm understanding it correctly. I'm, I'm curious the train of thought of crosswalk, uh, Designs. Director Jenkins, you got any? So we've had some conversations a few times about doing, yeah, colors or themes. Um, the poppies at the Legion has come up, or or various colors. Um, so I think we'll work with the the library and and any other groups that we can get on board. Maybe Yak as well. Um, whether we want to come up with a, a theme for all of Main Street and identify sort of three or four uh, intersections and then um, put that out for submissions or if we want to look at each intersection specifically um, and then, yeah, make a bit of an event of it to have those, the winners actually do some of the, the installation. So um, we will be replacing some of the downtown ones and, um, so they, the painting on them will likely only last this season. Hopefully the actual crosswalks will last. Maybe two. Certainly is oh, lots to think about discussion. Anyways, uh, have we discussed this enough? Or have we enough uh, thought for this to make a motion at this time? can't use Dr. Seuss, we can't use Potato Head, we can't use... How about, how about, the, how about this? <laughs> the Simpsons. Someone prepared to make a motion. So I'll take the easy one. I'll move that we support the initiation of a crosswalk design contest to develop designs for Main Street with funding up to $2,000 from the 2021 Urban Design Operating Project. All right. Uh, there's no further discussion. I'll ask the question. All in favor? Your Worship, I... Oh, sorry. Just one thought comes to mind. If it was an unfettered design contest, could it 
possibly, you know, interfere with the bigger picture if, you know, like if Mr. Potato Head hadn't been banned already. <laughs> um, no, but mm -hmm. it, I, I don't want to tie the crosswalks up with the others, but visually they could, they need to kind of work together too, don't they? Yeah, the crosswalks are going to be a, you know, they'll last this year likely. So, um, you know, if we can get them and we'll set up a bit of a theme or. So there's no real, yeah. Okay. It's, it's the, the idea with these things is that they are low risk, that if it, if it doesn't look good, we'll wash yeah. them off and start again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, then I'll ask the question. All in favor of Rebringer's motion? Thank you. Do you want to do any of these others tonight? Today? Okay. Your Worship, I'll, I'll take the first one. Uh, we proceed with option two, outlined below uh, the $10,000 funded for the downtown public spaces design. Okay. Everybody understand that motion? Okay. All in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you. Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I move that Council proceeds with option three outlined to initiate an update of the downtown area redevelopment with design support not to exceed $20,000 funded from the Urban Design 2021 operating project. Okay, and discussion. All in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you. All right. Is that covered? Seems like when I get in a hurry, I miss some. Okay. I think that uh, concludes your uh, RFD. Okay. Move on to uh, corporate services RFD regarding 2020 fourth quarter. An unaudited financial. Director Weimark. Thank you, Your Worship. So back in 2020, the province experienced a pandemic like no other. It has taken a huge toll on the economy and has created financial burden to businesses. This generated lack of jobs and financial difficulty to employees and their families. The town was no exception to these circumstances and was at risk of a huge loss of revenue while ensuring our staff stayed healthy and protected. The town also dedicated at providing and maintaining the same service level of service within means we had available. In the fall of 2020, the provincial government announced the Municipal Operating Support Transfer Program, commonly known as MOST. The funding was put in place to offset the fiscal challenges caused by COVID. The funds that were available were 799579 so the revenue side of the financials are showing the most money with uh, reflected as follows. Uh, recreation revenue loss was 297,546. Tax and utility penalties loss was 95,532. COVID wages and expenses for the year 2020 was 289,610. COVID wages and expenses from January to March is 39,951. And there is a um, thought process of putting the remaining money of 76,940 towards FCSS for community mental health and well-being. And this did incorporate uh, library passes, um, pool passes, anything that along the lines that uh, can go out to families to help them uh, get back into socializing, uh, as well as some mental counseling sessions, um, financial sessions due to COVID. The revenue for the financials would appear to have met budget, but that is due mostly to the most funding. Expenses or wages 
were considerably lower with the limited venues we were, had allowed open. It required less staffing and the reallocation of staff to other departments. Due to COVID, all our casual part-time and some contracted employees were not required. Our summer sa staffing was not hired as well. Staffing did their, their, their diligence, however, being f fiscally responsible and worked hard at keeping the spending to a minimum. Our expenses showed relatively meeting or below budget. The transfer to reserves was less than originally budgeted, which, comp which comprised mainly of a lower amount for the water wastewater reserve. The total requisition for the 2020 year was much larger than anticipated. Some large billings came in in the spring and summer season due to large rainfall as well as some infiltration we are trying to reduce. The opening 2020 reserve balances was 14,629,57 to an M balance of 14,515,364. Funds taken from reserves was 1,363,870 and revenue that was put into reserves was 1,258,276. 2020, however, did see us complete uh, quite a few capital projects. Uh, cemetery design, infrastructure priority review, arena exterior painting, arena, arena roof repairs, arena shower addition, the horseshoe pit reallocation, wayfinding signage phase two, the PLC upgrade at reservoir number two and number three, curlin rink exhaust fan, the town clock, the pool pump upgrade, new diving blocks, library concrete floors, lighting switch over at the fire hall, fire hall concrete repairs on the outside, uh, new radios com communication system, the trail replacement on 52nd Avenue, the gateway landscaping phase one, 53rd Avenue close improvements, 38th street surface improvements, the park shop, park shop roof repairs, public works roof repairs, a new gravel truck, sewer relining, and 61st Avenue service improvements. The 2020 surplus is as follows, unspent expenses of 1019033 less collected revenue of 141,590, unspent contingency, which was 78,239, which gave a surplus of 955,682. It needs to be noted that the surplus would have only been 270,000 if the most funding from the government had not taken place. Uh, service levels may be impacted upon the allocation of the surplus. Um, administration is uh, requesting the surplus to be allocated as follows, 440,000 to heliport costs, 10,000 to the operating manual of the heliport, which already has been allocated by council, and 505,682 to the facility reserve. So at this time, I'm requesting that council uh, accepts the 2020 fourth quarter financials showing a surplus of 955,682 and that council also approve the allocation of surplus as presented in the request for decision. I have one question, Director Weimar. <coughs> we have the uh, some involvement, financial involvement at the ski hill. So those when I brought to you at at the previous meeting that's yeah. done at the tax conversation so originally the tax bylaw would have been here with that conversation we're waiting for a rate still for our dip properties from the province so that's uh, next council discussion that funding will have that conversation okay. with taxes thank you all right well i think it's a rather encouraging report your worship i have one question i don't want to do this line by line but um, when I when I looked and saw other other sales of services and supplies, which is about third line down in your detail, um, we did really well. Could we do more of that? <laughs> it's um, yeah. That that would have been allocation of some of the most money that got put into that GL. Okay. So it probably normally would. So it gets like a lot of these smaller items get quite confused by. Correct. Others. So that's why this presentation was done a little different. Our financials, yeah. of course, don't look like our normal financials because we would have never met all that revenue, um, or would have. Hard to say, but um, because it was the most money um, that made up our revenue, they, it is a very different picture. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.
Any other questions in that report? You want two motions? Okay. Is someone prepared to make the first motion to accept the uh, fourth quarter financial showing 955? I'll 16. make that motion, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Bates. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Would someone like to make that second motion? Your Worship, I will make the other motion that Council approve the allocation of surplus as presented. Okay, thank you, Councillor uh, Barkley. All in favor of the motion? Carried. Thank you. Your Worship, can I just ask one thing? I, th this is a bit odd, but do we ever send a thank you letter? Like th This funding has really been kind of a godsend for our municipality. And I think we're, we're very good at beating up other levels of government and probably feel that ourselves sometimes. So maybe it would be nice to send a letter to, I guess it would be municipal affairs, would it? Saying thank you that we appreciate this funding and it's et cetera. So, because I, I don't know if that's done very often. We just put our hand out and <laughs> want more, right? But we never say, yeah. So, uh, Gee, you, you want a motion? A, okay, I, 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 will make a, I will make a motion that we, we send a letter to um, Municipal Affairs and I guess CC or MLA saying thank you for this most funding. No, I think it's a great idea. Okay, all in favor of the motion? Carried. Okay, uh, got some correspondence there. One in additional, and I did everybody get this email? Okay, I did respond to him, but uh, all I did it at, I certainly encouraged his uh, response and hmm? the Jim Carroll. So we have that uh, that letter, and uh, <clears throat> he's certainly done some homework and gives a pretty clear picture, personally, I think, of that uh, election sign business. Councillor Barkley. Your Worship, can I ask a question through to say O Becker with uh, item number six, the um, from the Lions Club? Did you ever? receive a report back like they were going to do some testing and so um yeah so i was going to highlight this one for you before you moved on um so there was studies done um at dodds lake um with respect to to the stocking and the the general consensus is is that the fish won't likely overwinter um the lions club is still of the position that they would like to um stock it it would be sort of an annual um contribution I guess that would be would stock the pond they could be fished um, and then if there is any cleanup if there's die off that sort of thing um, they are committed to to coming into some sort of agreement with us that they would take that on um, there we had a bit of a conversation with respect to the now the presence of the the Prussian carp in the um, in Dodds Lake and whether or not um, the trout would survive. Um, their proposal is to be putting in sort of adult, 300 adult sized rainbow trout. Um, again, I'm, I'm not sure how um, well they would compete. Um, from what I understand, the carp are actually more of a, like a bottom feeder type of thing as opposed to too aggressive. Um, they would, yeah, they would like to try to pursue this. Um, they will still have to get a permit from Alberta Environment before they could move forward. Um, 
and yeah, would like an indication from council if they could, as they would need to um, place their order for the, the fish sooner, uh, sooner rather than later. So, Your Worship, through to Director Jenkins, so like where are we at as far as an organization? Do, do we need more information about how these two species live together and um, how many fish are going to be fished every year? Are we going to have 100 dead fish floating at the end of the... the I'm not sure that we can get that information in terms of how we would know how that would play out. Again, they will need the, I don't know why that, um, the uh, permit from Alberta Environment. Um, okay, I, I guess my... But, I mean, I, I'm open. I, I guess I'm, I'm just... When we first had them here, mm -hmm. there was going to be some work done as far mm -hmm. as whether things would survive or not, and we've now determined that they won't survive unless mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of work done on the lake, correct? Or the, the pond? And so, so now they want us to go ahead and approve the trout. I think their or, position at this point is that they've accepted that they won't yeah okay yeah they won't yeah. survive um that they think it would be a an amenity and an addition if you you know to be able to have the option yeah. um to fish we did have the conversation about the the carp and that you know people are fishing for those yeah. um as it sits so um yeah so you worship through to director jenkins are like are you bringing more information back to us about how do how does it get cleaned up, and who's going to do that? And if there's a bunch of dead fish, so that would be something we can work out in an agreement with. Um, you know, if council wants to move ahead with that, we would work out um, the agreement as to how the how that's going to take place and what their commitment would be. Your worship. Your worship. Um, just an opinion. I, I don't see much downside to this. I, I think they initially did say, you know, they would have been looking at many fish, and 300 is not very many, and they're going to have to compete with. <laughs> well, it's it's mainly a food thing. I think that they compete with the Prussian carp and and the pelicans and all the other things out there. And I, I don't see this as being a real. It'd be interesting. It'd be an interesting experiment. I think, mm -hmm. is is my opinion. I think we'll get the answer to the research at the end of the project. So. <laughs> I, through, you worship through to Director Jenkins. Yeah, I I see it as a very positive too. You know we. I think last meeting we talked about events and having an events uh, coordinator and I could see this turning into, you know, like a weekend fish derby for 500 rainbow trout because that's a pretty nice trout, a 10 inch trout. So I, you know, I think the, you know, the, the you know, the, the young people that camp out with their parents in the campground, I know I, I saw a lot of them that, this past summer, they'd come down and with their fishing rods, these little guys and they'd, they'd try and fish and I didn't have the heart to tell them that <laughs> you're not going to catch anything except carp, but they were they were flailing away. They had their fly rods, so you know I think it's very positive, and I agree with Councillor uh, Reberger. Uh, we're going to find out uh, probably uh, next spring when uh, when the ice goes off the lake, and uh, uh, I think it's uh, you know a one year pilot. So let's uh, let's try it, and it's not costing the town anything. Uh, Lions Club has stepped up. Uh, I, I think it's a good community community sponsorship. So I I, I support this initiative. And your, your worship, um, through to Director Jenkins, while we're on the subject of, of the lake, are are we looking at putting up any kind of um, rules at, at the lake for this summer? I, I know that you know we've done the Dodds Lake plan, but um, I don't think that work's going to get underway this summer. But um, I, I've just had some feedback from people in the community that. You know, or kayakers and paddle boarders, and and um, you know, they're they're just wondering about that and going forward. Um, yeah, we'll certainly have signage about the carp, and if we do have trout as well in that component of it, um, the 
the policies and what those rules would be, I guess, are still sort of going to come out through the, the Dodds Lake plan itself. Yeah, Your Worship, through to Director Jenks, I guess my, my question is more around boats on the lake mm -hmm. and how many are allowed at one time and, and that kind of thing. So hopefully we just met with Stantec last week, so we should have a draft um, in the next probably, probably mid-April is when it'll make its way onto Council's agenda. So um, once we have that plan adopted, that'll give us a bit of a framework for some of those rules. Councillor Harrison. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, part B of the letter referred to a memorial and doing something for uh, uh, Don Llewellyn. Have we had more discussions with so council's last direction to administration was sort of we would wait for the the Dodds Lake plan to see how we could coordinate you know any sort of um, commemoration or, or donation that they were looking at so um, yeah we haven't had since I think it was about November that we had that conversation it appears that there's been something they have they been talking with the Lions Club because the Lions Club in have a, have a note in there that they'd like to do some kind of recognition. So my understanding is that they haven't necessarily directly talked to the Llewellyns, but it's something that the club has has yeah. identified as being an opportunity or something that okay. that they've discussed at their club level. I just suggest that any recognition should be done in conjunction with the plan. Mm -hmm. We don't want to put something in and then have to tear it out to do the plan. So, you know, it's a just a note, just a comment, thank you. Your Worship, I'll move that we give the Lions Club whatever nod they need or permission to, to put 300, 300 experimental trout into the, into the lake this year. Keep it separate from all those other discussions. Okay. I think, uh, Stantec would have to be notified too and when they're preparing rules and regs that there might have to be some specific areas for fishing or something and boats and everybody else. But anyways, the motion is to endorse the uh, stocking of some 300 fish. All in favor of the motion. Carried. <coughs> okay. Do we need anything in regards to the ski hill uh, letter? You're sorry. I wouldn't mind just kind of coming through the correspondence. There's some big stuff in there, actually. Yeah, there is. Um, the very first one, the Alberta Justice and Solicitor General Biology Casework Analysis Chargeback. That is a new charge. Uh, it's you could refer it to it as a download uh, to municipalities to pay a proportionate share of the biology testing that the, um, in our case, RCMP conducts. And the total 100% proportion um, cost for this service is um, looks like 5.9 million, um, including $905,132 for RCMP municipal agencies. So, um, so the municipal detachments that charge, which is going back to us, is 2.149%, um, which equates to 19500 roughly. So that's a new charge to the town of Innisfil, um, yeah. and it's also a new charge to other municipalities. So that'll be reflective in an adjustment to our operational budget. And council, next council will see this on the, during the budget for the 2022 deliberations. So we thought we'd make you aware of that um, biology casework analysis um, charge to the town of Innisfil. So to direct, or to CEO Becker, so does that just get added to the policing line in the budget? Is that where that goes or how does that, how, how does that work? I see it, it's a, it's a clean invoice on its own, how it comes in the future, but Looks like it's outside the scope of RCMP. So um, it's coming from the Justice Solicitor General, not from RCMP. So my, Your Worship, my 
initial thoughts were obviously to ask the question have we ever seen anything like it and we haven't. The next would be the question obviously again back to how we pay for our policing here and, and how other municipalities don't. You know, some of this portion would probably be to deal with a crime that was committed outside of Innisfail, but run through the RCMP detachment here. Is that is that a good guess or? It's, it's a good <laughs> question. Yeah. And so, it almost it's yeah it's weird. This is our first indication that this was coming. Or did, do we have any advance notice? No. No. So it almost sure seems not. to me like we should direct some correspondence back and say, or look at talking to AUMA and everything we would normally do with respect to policing, and say what you know, what's our position on this? AUMA, I guess, comes to mind to start with, and then I would like to see it brought back up too that it. If that's related to this RCMP detachment, um, I suggest a strong suggestion that uh, municipal affairs justice Solicitor general figures out how much of that should be paid by another another uh, municipality. Your Worship, because our base, we can certainly follow up um, with the Solicitor uh, Justice and Solicitor General's office, AUMA. Just some, some clarity on what this charge is to the yeah, that's what we have mainly. I think you're looking for how they arrived at that number. <clears throat> so with uh, whatever we find, uh, we'll certainly report that back. Uh, we will we'll not proceed to pay that invoice until we have that information back to council. I see it says if it's not paid in 30 days, there's a late payment charge. I wonder how substantial that charge is if it's... Okay. <laughs> Just... Okay, we'll use our best judgment, uh, <laughs> Councillor Rivere. Yeah. So if there's anything more on that one, the next item actually is, uh, you can also consider another download to municipalities. Um, it is referred to as the Government of Alberta's Dis Disaster Recovery Program, DRP, um, which is to occur in 2021 and onward, uh, as outlined in the 2021 Disaster Assistance Guidelines. Um, the government is stating that in response to the rising cost of frequency of disasters in Alberta, they're making changes to the DRP program, um, which they're intending to share the responsibility of disasters back to those who are impacted directly. Um, they talk about a 90-10 cost sharing agreement arrangement. So um, what I anticipate if Innisfail would be hit by uh, some disaster, such as a tornado, then it could be on the hook of the municipalities to um, pay for some of those costs associated with with um, that disaster. Um, we saw a little bit of that with the city of Edmonton um, tornado. Was it tornado or hail? Calvary. Yeah, I think it's hail and Calvary. extreme weather. Yeah, so that was the kind of the start, I think, of that, that change. Um, they're implementing a funding limit up to 500,000 per homeowner application and a limit on assistance to one time per, prop per property. So. Certainly will be an analyze based on circumstance. Um, however, there could be some pressure on the municipality to to provide some funding assistance. It's hard to really say. Your Worship, through to CEO Becker, do you know, like, is disaster defined? Because my understanding behind this is to kind of um, maybe deter municipalities that are allowing new communities to be built along you know floodplains or next to the river like I, we think of the, the disaster down and with the floods in calgary a few years ago and canmore and, and stuff and homes that were built right on the river were falling into the river and so it, 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 does it cover all kinds of disasters like tornado is much different than allowing somebody to build a home on the edge of the, the river 
Yeah, Your Worship, Councillor Barkley, my understanding is exactly what you stated is to put some responsibility back on the municipality for proper planning, whether it's adjacent to water course or banks or whatever. So you're right, It's we, we need to make sure we our planning is is accounted for to assist our citizens and business to mitigate against these potential costs. But do, do, Your Worship, through to CEO Becker, do you know, like, would, would Tornado be a part of this? Because that's a much different disaster. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be honest with you, Councillor Barkley, the definition of disaster associated with this plan, I, I'm not right now familiar with what that definition is. Your Worship, Councillor Barkley raises an excellent question because, I mean, you could have physical disaster like rail, or you could have endless, and, and I guess the one bullet that I'm seeing here that bothers me is a one-time uh, funding, so no fault of the town. If you had a if you had a tornado and then you had something else that was totally unrelated, uh, there's that's the end of the funding, and and the person might have received a small amount the first time and then nothing. I'm assuming they're referring to natural disasters. Well, well. I think we need to ask that question, but even if it's natural. There's a difference between building on a flood, a flood plain and getting hit by a, yeah. a windstorm. One area I read in this correspondence is what can we do as a community? And it states that it encourages all Albertans and communities to purchase adequate insurance, have reserve funds, invest in mitigation and infrastructure maintenance, and restrict future property development in high risk areas. I guess I don't know what I, I got to go home and read my homeowner's policy more carefully. I guess as to what's covered. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you, you your worship, through to CEO Becker, it may be worth our while to maybe have somebody talk to us about this. Like um, I don't know, Tyler McDonald comes to mind, right? Somebody that that knows insurance and what homeowners can get and can't get, and and um, I mean, flooding is not always covered and. So I, I just feel that we don't really know what this means other than mm -hmm. a disaster. And as Councillor Bates says, if the train comes through and it goes off the, the tracks and there's a, a disaster from that, and we've already had the storm like we had last summer, and or a tornado, tornado that wouldn't be unusual for our area. And how does one set off against another one? Well, you, your Worship, Councillor Barkley, I think uh, we'll do our due diligence on the risk mitigation component for for us as a municipality, but um, also if we can advise um, our citizens, businesses, um, maybe through some knowledge of, uh, and maybe that's doing that through the policy um, insurance companies, may they do that directly on their own, but we'll find out how that all works. So we'll do a deeper dive into this topic. And I guess we need to look at our own insurance, like our municipality's right. insurance specific. Thank you. So the other item from my perspective is number seven, Council's Innisfil Ski Hill funding request. There was a little bit of discussion on that during the, through Heather's, uh, um, report on surplus and financials and so you see a request from the Innisfil Ski Hill and I'm just kind of skimming to that page so they, they do ask for some dollars um, so what I see in this correspondence is $35,000 to support the works still underway at the ski hill um, so a little bit of a breakdown there so that's one irony I believe Heather's not coming during the tax discussion, that, that number. Um, I know Steve, Stephen, um, and through Megan um, are talking to the Ski Hill about the assistance for such things as barriers, concrete barriers, gravel and black dirt, um, 
and also on the security gates request so there is a little bit of discussion on that so what, what that really is but we certainly we can help on those other areas without really any allocation of, of dollars at where your your involvement for direction we can we can help um, tax relief um, it's recommended to to stay away from the tax relief and you can certainly offset through any grant funding yeah. that's some some area I'd, I'd recommend not to not to go there um, just due to the fact of of, of um, what's the word Precedence. precedents thank you <laughs> so yeah so <laughs> you've had other requests over your term in that regard so again you can provide funding in another way but tax relief is something it's difficult and there's other information as per their correspondence but the focus that we're we as administration that's you see differently is 35,000 to come back in in a month or so and um, and we'll provide operational support as per their request through to uh, CAO Becker I, I'm just wondering too if, as you digest the uh, the in-kind uh, list if you could provide us with you know what we are would intend to do and and most of what I see there will have a definite cost to it at some point so I mean the 35 could become 50 real quick if like I don't know what a gate looks like, all that kind of stuff. So, I think the gate costing is yet to be determined through discussion. That may be a cost coming back to you. We don't know, so that could be outside of the operational piece. Depends on what that gate looks like. Your worship, sir, to CEO Becker, with, with respect to the lighting that they're looking to put up, like is that the town that would be doing that? Because it's it's technically our parking lot, is it not, or our land where the parking lot is, or how, how does that work? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure what they're referring to for lighting, but <clears throat> there is a couple options that they could do for. Uh, there's two two light poles or uh, power poles along there that we could look at potentially looking to put lighting on to additional uh, light up, but uh, that needs for further clarification. Okay. Uh, we're not gonna deal with this, these key hill numbers right now then, are we? And that's council based on the correspondence unless you have other direction but right now um through heather will bring that request back that thirty-five thousand come back at a later yeah. time okay is that all right with everybody yeah okay as per uh correspondence from mr carroll i did reach out to mr carroll just indicating that um letter will likely be place on the agenda based on council approval of that yeah. um, any action associated with with information he's provided um, as per your direction to provide a bylaw that will be communicated back to mr. Carroll thank you okay any other discussion on the correspondence Would someone like to move that we receive these correspondence for information? I'd so move, Your Worship, that we accept correspondence for information. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. All in favor of the motion? Carried. Quickly, uh, I want to do a round table. I guess I get to Council be first. Um, so last week I had MPC. Um, Police and uh, Safe Communities meeting. Um, last Thursday, um, I had a date with Moderna at my pharmacy. <laughs> yeah, that went very well. <laughs> um, 
so this morning, right up until this meeting, I had safe community training from the Canadian municipality and that crime prevention. It's just an amazing training course that they're putting on. Uh, they're looking at all aspects of safety, health, and well-being of the community and, and how it's how it's evolved in, in various municipalities. So um, one, one of the things today was like 80 people on this Zoom. 25 of them were from uh, Strathcona County, and uh, that's quite <coughs> interesting. So somewhere down the line as we interact with the with the policing and safe communities uh, um, committee, more of this will, will come out and I think it'll give us some resource for the future of, of how to further engage and or even, even as members uh, turn over, uh, how to look to the community for, for new blood and that sort of thing. It's uh, very interesting. And I'll leave it at that, thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. First, I had a um, chamber board meeting last week. I, I did talk about an idea of um, potentially chamber discussing with, discussing with Stuart, um, exploring an app as opposed to potentially that sign that was going to go at McDonald's corner. So I don't know if you need any kind of a motion to kind of discuss, start that exploratory discussion process or, no, okay, good. Anyway, they were quite interested and, and um, so I'm sure that maybe you can reach out to, to them, Stuart. And thanks. And then um, I see the plaques are on the clock downtown. The gentleman was out there on the weekend putting those on onto the clocks. Looks nice. And I think we have HCMA tomorrow and the um, Aquatic Center multiplex discussion. So very much looking forward to that. So since last week, I, we had a special library meeting last Monday night. Uh, Tuesday, the Community Services Standing Committee, and as you see in the minutes, we approved the, some funding out of the solar farm for the first time, into, out of that fund, as well as some community grants. And then tomorrow I've got the uh, pool update, followed very quickly by the transportation, and then I was gonna sit in on that uh, policing Zoom later. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I attended MPC last week. Uh, notice the clock, the plaques are up. Uh, I'm doing awareness training on Sunday for uh, Chickens 101. I've got uh, the public engagement uh, open house tomorrow, tomorrow evening with the policing committee and also tomorrow afternoon with the, uh, with the pool updates. Okay, uh, I did, uh, we did sit in, we had a couple hour meeting with the uh, South Central Mayor's group uh, on Thursday, I'm sorry, it was Friday, Friday at one o'clock, and we had three MLAs on, on the Zoom as well, with Dreeshan, Cooper, and Nixon. And uh, it was very, it was a good open discussion, but generally the, uh, the uh, driving uh, issue for most of the muni municipalities is the, uh, the need to uh, reduce some of the limitation restrictions that were going on and, and that uh, they all asked that the uh, MLA support them. But, um, it's, and it's mainly the mental health of the community that's a, a situation right now. But so anyways, what we've been doing is uh, Didsbury hosted it the first couple times. Olds just hosted it twice. And we're hosting it twice here. So I've got a, I'm going to need a secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll be talking to the CAO about some help there. Maybe he wants to keep minutes. I don't know, I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, the meetings are monthly. April and May are here, so uh, I'm assuming it's probably still Zoom for a period of time. But anyways, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm 
I'm already getting text me- bad text messages about the word today. But where do we sign up for the rebellion? And <laughs> so, anyways, that's un- unfortunate. The guys are, I guess, watching it on TV. But uh, uh, I think that's the, the biggest concern I have is to somehow we've got to we've got to get through this uh, these limitations in the community because it's it's just not not good for people sneaking around like somebody's they're going to tattle on them or something if they go to somebody's for coffee it's it's kind of a it's really too bad it has to be that way anyways uh i don't think i've got anything else uh stephen have you got anything going no no heather you got anything new any additional megan I was just going to, for Gavin, it, it was just that they didn't announce any easing of restrictions today at the provincial uh, teleconference. So that's all the details I've seen. But yeah, no changes as of this week. I've also got a, a teleconference coming up. Ken, that was with the, is that the mayor from St. Albert? Yeah. He wants to... to uh, have a discussion with me, and I'll probably get Todd to sit in or somebody if he's got time to go through the um, the solar farm uh, impact on our community and the details of it. So uh, Ken has put together some bullet points for me on the solar farm, and we'll have a little discussion. So, uh, Stuart, do you got anything? Uh, yeah, just a very quick one, Your Worship, just to uh, uh, remind Council, as per some of the comments tonight, that tomorrow is the uh, online stakeholder engagement for the Policing Committee. Uh, it starts at 6 o'clock through Zoom, uh, and we are asking folks just to register beforehand, if possible, um, through uh, innisfail.ca slash community safety. Uh, it's also linked through our Facebook page. Yeah. Okay. And Vanessa, anything else? Just for the next item, if there's anyone that wants to speak to council to use the raise hand function after this roundtable's over. Say again. (laughs) Just there's seven people online and for the next open mic, they use the raise the hand function to let me know to let them speak if they want to. All right. And have you any there with their hands up? Not right now. But when you call open mic session, okay, just reminding them for that. All right, and Todd, we'd certainly encourage uh, the people out in the uh, virtual world there to, uh, if you have a question or, or some discussion you would like to talk about for a few minutes, let it, let us know. Put your hand up. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I guess we'll need a motion to uh, well quickly update upcoming events there. I don't know if there's anything you might need to discuss there. But uh, other than that, we need a motion to go in camera. I will move your worship. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Barkley. <laughs> I'm going in camera. All in favor? Carried. Take a two-minute break.